Hey everyone, welcome to the first version of Cooper's Hawk Sommelier Smackdown. Um, super, super excited to have you guys here. Um, this is gonna be really fun. It's the first time that we've done anything like this and you know, there's lots of sommeliers out there who, um, who, who do blind tasting battles, but very rarely are they done in this kind of a format where uh, we aren't actually tasting the wine. So I'm gonna be challenging Jordan Sotelo to doing a blind tasting only by the description. I'm gonna describe exactly what's in my glass and she in turn is going to describe what's in her glass and we're gonna see if we can guess each other's wine. So she should be on in just a minute here and uh, she'll be coming to you live from uh, Cooper's Hawk Esquire in downtown Chicago. I'm here in California in my home. Cocktail hour started a little bit early at 4.30, um, but this is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, super stoked to see all of you coming online here. This is awesome, and there's Jordan. So, um, as you can see, I've got a white wine, and I cannot wait to see what Jordan has. And there she is. Hello, Jordan. <laughs> Where are you? Describe what's behind you right now. You know what? I'm in literally the Windy City, as you can see by my hair blowing. But those are the very empty quarantine streets of uh, the wow. here in Chicago. Everything's all boarded up and safe. Indeed. Indeed. Well, I, I miss you. I miss all of you downtown Chicago right now. Well, I miss you too. It's been... It's been a minute since we've all been quarantined. I know, I know. Well, at least we get to drink together today. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so I'm gonna tell everybody what we're doing and then, uh, and then we'll dive right in. We'll go for our all challenge. Right. So to start out with what we're doing, um, like I said before, a little sommelier smackdown. I'm going to describe what's in my glass and Jordan's going to guess it based on what I'm describing. And the, um, the way that this typically works with, with blind tasting is, this is something that sommeliers practice a lot of. Um, to go through the sommelier program, the exams, of course, this is part one of the examinable factors, um, but uh, it's also something that sommeliers, whether they're being examined or not, they're always practicing blind tasting. And blind tasting is something that is legitimately um, a skill. It's not just a parlor trick. It's a great parlor trick when you're right, but most of the time it's really about honing your skills, about understanding how to describe the traditional flavors that are expected in, uh, in these different varietals. So I always say that, you know, a sommelier will be able to choose a really great Chianti to put on their wine list and they know it's a great Chianti because they can identify Chianti blind. Um, so just kind of an example of it. And, and also as, as sommeliers, blind tasting helps you really definitively understand what to expect in a varietal, to know, uh, to know what is classic and what is traditional. And like you should, so that you know exactly what San Giovese should taste like and uh, benchmark it against what, what it is that you're tasting to choose for your restaurant. So super important skill. And it's also a really fun skill. Um, and it's not just for sommeliers. So Jordan, tell us about how other people might be able to use the blind tasting skills. Yeah, so really, really fun aspect that blind tasting allows you to do as you get familiar with your palate, you learn how to describe what you love and also what you don't love, which is just as important because as a wine professional, hospitality professional, whether it's in a retail store, or in a restaurant, that professional is gonna wanna find a wine that meets you where you're at. They wanna pair you with a wine that allows you to discover something new or allows you to experience something similar to what you love, um, especially if what you love is not necessarily represented exactly on the menu or on the shelves with a specific favorite wine. So if you can develop a vocabulary to describe what you do and don't like, then it allows you to have a better experience wherever you are purchasing your wine. True, excellent. Um, 
so as far as blind tasting goes, uh, the, the way that it works, if you're going for a sommelier exam, for example, is that you would typically have six wines in front of you in about 25 minutes to identify them. Um, talk about what they look like, smell like, taste like, and identify them by country and grape variety and, uh, and vintage. And the things that you're doing is um, basically coming up with the clues that are in the glass. So you're looking at the wine and there's all these different clues that you find in what it, uh, what it looks like. And then as you're smelling it, you're describing those smells and describing the flavors. And that's sort of the sensory evaluation side of blind tasting. And then you put all of those things together and say, what makes sense? Like what grape variety tastes like this? Um, you know, what, um, you know, what, where in the world would that grape variety be grown to match the level of alcohol and the level of acidity that's in the wine? And, uh, you know, what other things are similar? And um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. It takes a lot of practice. But I always say that blind tasting is like, it's like learning a language. You're learning the language of uh, what you smell and taste and describing it and matching it with the wines of the world. So it's fun stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, go ahead. I did see um, a really good question there about as far as, you know, when you're a beginner. One thing I did want to say, you know, everyone has a Rolodex of flavor profiles in your uh, scent memory. And it's completely based on, you know, what you grew up eating when you were a kid from what you've experienced new as an adult. And I've had a lot of guests tell me that they don't know how to taste and they could never taste wine and describe it the way that you know quote unquote songs do um, but you know the aspect of being able to pair a picture with a sense it's actually a, um, a little trail in your brain that you have to actually work like a muscle as if you're going to the gym so training your brain how to connect that scent memory with a picture in your mind to describe it uh, when I started studying wine, it was literally when I would go to the grocery store and just pick up a lemon and smell a lemon and when you're cooking pasta, smelling the onions when they're simmering, you know, start start training your brain to slow down and really intake what you're surrounded with. For sure, for sure. I just saw a question that came through too, um, asking about whether or not I'm a super taster. Um, I know that I'm not, I'm not sure if you are. Super taster has to do with how many taste, literally how many taste buds you have on, on your tongue. And super tasters typically really hate bitter things. They, they, they don't like um, dark chocolate or grapefruit or um, strong spices, strong seasoning. Mm -hmm. um, being a super taster means you're super tuned in to flavors. You don't necessarily have to be a super taster to be able to blind taste wine. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I wouldn't consider myself a super taster because I like bitter things. How about you? A little, little bit. I, if it's dark chocolate and bitters and cocktails or, you know, I think mm -hmm. my taste buds definitely run towards a little bit more of the extremes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, you know, so one other thing about blind tasting too, and this is in regards to, you know, and I think this is something that people find really confusing is when they see sommeliers describing wines as being like, you know, this smells like leather or, you know, black, you know, dried black cherries. It's, you know, it sounds very esoteric considering that the only thing that's in this glass is fermented grape juice. Um, but, you know, coming up with the descriptions for what you smell and taste is not easy. It's not like, you know, when you, when you see something, you know, I, I can describe to you what an orange looks like and um, you can picture that in your mind. I can describe a song and you can kind of replay it in your mind. But if I asked you to think about like what an orange smells like and tastes like, and you've never had it before, you know, the first time that you would describe that, you'd have to describe it in a way of comparisons because it's not something I, that you can recall in your mind. So you have to say, you know, it has some bitterness, it has, you know, the sweetness, it's, you know, like a lemon, but it's sweeter, you know, like trying to describe what it's similar to. And that's what we do with wine, you know, so you smell a wine, you're like, well, it smells like cherry, you know, or it smells like berries. Is it more like cherry or strawberry? And then is it more like dried cherry or sweet cherry, ripe cherry, tart cherry, um, to kind of, yeah, you just sort of develop this Rolodex of descriptions and it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. I'll leave it at that. And that being said, I think we should dive into our challenge. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to just describe this wine the way that I would as if, uh, as if I was in an exam and let's, let's see if you can tell what's in my glass. 
So I have a, uh, this is a clear white wine. It is sort of a golden straw in color. Um, it fades out to platinum at the rim. Um, it has sort of medium to medium plus viscosity. On the nose, the wine is clean, no flaws. Very fresh, really vibrant fruit. Um, lots of fresh lemon, like lemon custard, um, preserved lemon, lemon peel. I get lots of golden apple. Uh, there's also a really tropical tone to the wine. There's a lot of, of pineapple, like really fresh cut pineapple. Uh, there's also a little bit of a nuttiness to the wine. It's almost like a, like crushed hazelnuts. It's toasty. Um, there's, there is some evidence of oak aging on the wine. I get a really distinctive kind of nutty, toasty flavor to it, aroma to it. It's very creamy smelling. And again, super tropical, very lifted aromatics and uh, no distinctive minerality to it. It's a wine so far that it's very driven by fruit and wood aromas. Let's try the palate. Mm. Um, the wine is dry. It is, um, it's dry, but there's de definitely a definitive ripeness to it. Uh, similar fruit aromas that are, that, that are fruit flavors that I got off the nose. This super, super ripe citrus. There's a, definitely a citrusy note, but it's not like sour lemon. It's more like really sweet Meyer lemon. Um, preserved lemon, baked lemon pie, and then there's this really incredible rich baked apple, um, kind of golden delicious apple aroma, and then pineapple, almost like a pineapple upside down cake. Super yummy. Um, the, the same aromas of nuts, uh, baking spices, there's a real toasty, creamy, rich characteristic to it. Uh, it almost has like a caramely overtone to it, uh, my butterscotch. Um, again, no real distinctive minerality coming through. It's really driven by super ripe fruit, um, balanced by, with nice acidity and, uh, and, and a really toasty oak overtone. Um, the acidity on the wine is medium plus. The alcohol is also around medium plus. The complexity is high and the finish is long. I'm going to leave it at that right now. Uh, we'll come back to, should, I guess we should do, should we do our conclusions at the end? I want to ask everybody in the audience, let's see what everybody else thinks this is. And, uh, and then maybe Jordan, you should describe your wine and we'll come back to the conclusions. So everybody, any, any questions out there about, uh, what I just described and what you think it might be? I see lots of, uh. I've seen everything from Chenin Blanc, dry Riesling, Chardonnay, Unoak Chardonnay. It's definitely not Boone, uh, Boone Farm Strawberry Hill. <laughs> I see Pinot Gris, Lux Chard, Chard, Pinot Grigio. All right, I see a mix here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jordan, do you have any other questions you want to ask about, about uh, the flavors or so other, uh, anything else that um, might help you better get to your conclusion? Uh, I don't, well, you know what? I think that there is a few keynotes that I am pinpointing, you know, and a few aspects on the, the blinding side, something too that as we're smelling and tasting these wines, uh, an aspect of blind tasting is that it, it kind of leads us to show us how the fruit was treated. And mm -hmm. uh, with blind tasting, I kind of think of like a grape. If you imagine if you were a grape that was, uh, going to the beach every day in a hot, sunny, warm, <laughs> you know, I come from Irish German blood and cannot tan to save my life. Um, but if I came from a family that lived in a warm climate with lots of sun and you were outside all day, you could get a big, deep, dark tan. Uh, that kind of happens with grapes. If you're grown in a, in a warm place, you get that tan is the juicy, fruity version in grapes. So the warmer it is, the hotter it is, the juicier, the fruitier, and the colder it is, the tartar it is, and the more quiet the grape is. And so a couple things that you had mentioned that are really pertinent are that, you know, that the fruit has these characteristics of being a little bit more voluptuous and ripe and um, yellow. So that's leading me in the direction of being from a more sunny, warm place, but I'll leave my okay. conclusion till the end. 
All right. All right. Wait, are you going to describe your wine now? Yes. Okay, hang I on. Have a hang, on. <laughs> hang on. Bring it. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. All right. I did not bring the appropriate mask wear. I apologize. Clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have a red wine. So this wine, wine has a, sorry, English is hard. I swear it's my first language. Uh, so this is a red wine with pretty deep concentration. It is so deep in color that it's almost a little purple and fades to a light purple rim. I can't, it's so dark, I can't even see my hand through it. So that tells me that it's, it's gonna be a pretty rich, intense wine. Uh, the, Tears and viscosity are medium plus and leading me to the nose. This wine is very fruit forward. A lot of violet flowers, ripe blueberries, um, blackberries, black currants. There is some undertone of secondary notes coming through, a little bit of cocoa, chocolate, and a little bit of bacon. Mm. Definitely presence of spice on the nose, so leading me to believe that this oak, this wine has seen oak. It's a little clove, a little nutmeg, and vanilla. Yum. On the palate, definitely confirming those fruits there. Uh, those deep, dark blackberry, black fruit, cocoa, bacon still there. It's got a very voluptuous mid palate and a really long finish. Um, the alcohol is medium plus. It's it's a definitely coming from a, a warm climate. Okay. Confirming that there is oak. This has definitely um, definitely seen some wood and I'm not going to say anything else because I think that's plenty for you to go in the go in the right direction. I mean you had me at bacon. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see any so I so there's a few directions I'm, I'm thinking about here they just especially based on the color of it. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any floral aromatics in the wine? Definitely I think that they're it, um, more on the violet side, purple flowers. Okay. There's, there's definitely some some deep floral. It's not smacking you in the face, but it's very beautifully intricate. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, there's a lot. Yeah, you're talking about these really concentrated flavors, and when you were look when you were swirling it, I could see like it was like straight up staining the glass. Like it's obviously mm -hmm. a very extracted wine. Um, a lot of those black spices, like the the clove and stuff. Like I. I think I have some pretty good ideas of where I might want to go. All right. Should we reveal? Shall. All right. Uh, Tell so me what my, you think. My conclusion, drum roll please, I, it would be my assumption that you are drinking a New World Chardonnay from California. You said it is complex coming from a good producer, uh, which leads me to believe that it could be it's got to be California, really well-made New World Chardonnay. Okay. All right. You want to be more specific if, because we do be know that we have been limited. Gonna, if we're going to be really to specific, talk wines. <laughs> if we're going to be really specific, I it's got to be the Lux Chard. That nuttiness, that complexity, that long finish. It's the Lux. It was That's the new oak. It was the new oak barrels that gave it away, wasn't it? It was that. Nice Very and done. Nice. Score one for Jordan. <laughs> All right. Well done. Um, yeah, and that can be tricky. You know, Chardonnay is, you know, with white wines, there's only so many white wines that are oak aged. Um, but, uh, you know, with, with Cooper's Hawk, we really only have Chardonnay in it, but it does come down to, you know, our regular Chardonnay is, is not aged in new barrels. There are barrels that have been used the first time for our Lux Chardonnay. So, so they, uh, it's, it, this one just really stands forward with that oaky flavor. So great, great call. Yours a little harder. 
uh, because we have a few ones that would fall into that category. Namely, you know, starting with the color, you're talking about how like inky black and concentrated and dark that wine is. Um, and there's three wines that I can think of that, that uh, we would have that would fit that and some of the descriptions that you gave. Um, the Petite Syrah, super inky black wine, um, really spicy. Um, Malbec can often be really, really dark as well, especially Argentinian Malbec. Ours is from California, so, um, but it still has that real purple color to it. Uh, and the last one would be Shiraz. Um, so, you know, Syrah also has a lot of really black color to it. Um, but then, so I was asking about the floral aromas and you said, and you said violet, which for me is, I get that for sure a lot in Syrah, um, sometimes in Petite Syrah, all that clove spice, um, but bacon, I mean, there's like one grape to me that is like all about meat products and it's Syrah, it's Syrah. I, uh, yeah, I think this is Shiraz. What is it? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Very good. Very good. Well, you know, it's a draw. I mean, that wasn't much of a competition. We might have to do, we might have to go for a rematch on this one. Um, so um, let's, uh, let's talk about why we picked each of these wines. I picked the Chardonnay because I tonight am having a little bit of grilled trout and I'm going to put it with a, uh, some butter and some capers, and I'm gonna grill it. And I love those smoky flavors with a rich Chardonnay. Why did you pick Shiraz? I can't. Jordan, I can't hear you. Oh no. Jordan, we, I, don't, I don't think we can hear you. All right, I'm just gonna keep talking till I can hear your voice. But Syrah, uh, you know, Syrah, find that, you know, traditionally, and I think we just lost Jordan, maybe she'll come back. Um, but, uh, you know, so Syrah comes from multiple, hang on. Let's get Jordan back in. So, you know, Syrah comes from lots of places in the world. And, uh, you know, France is a very famous place for it. But, uh, and there she is. You're back. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you were just talking about how great Syrah is. Yeah, we were just talking <laughs> about how great Syrah is and, uh, you know, that there's a lot of great Syrah from around the world, but in particular, I love Shiraz because that warmer climate really makes it super opulent and big and rich and spicy. And, um, and it's also amazing from uh, northern, or, uh, the Northern Rhone Valley in France where you get lots of like black olive and, and tons of bacon and all that good stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, for all, all of you out there, what, um, what did you think about our blind tasting? Do you want to see more of these? Uh, also, favorite pairings for Shiraz slash Syrah. Yeah. But Shiraz, because it's got black fruit and bacon and kind of that gamey, wild aspect to it. This is one of my favorite wines. You know, we're about to hopefully, fingers crossed, because we got a snowstorm yesterday here in Chicago. But grilling time, grilling season, anything that's got a nice char on it. You know, Australia Shiraz can offer, it's got so much power, but also so much spice characteristics to it that can offer a really, really nice complexity. And because naturally these wines tend to be a little bigger, the much more voluptuous and, and higher alcohol naturally coming from such a sunny, hot, hot climate. Um, you know, if I'm grilling out with a Shiraz, I'll take, I'll take my bottle of wine and throw it in the freezer for 15 minutes and get it down to this nice cool temperature and then you can sip it while you're having a burger. Amazing. Awesome. Very cool. Um, 
Well, so we did have a little bit of a handicap that we were tasting only Cooper's Hawk wines on this, it, which uh, kind of narrows the range of what we could, could do. Maybe we should consider next time doing anything goes. It could be Cooper's Hawk. It might not be Cooper's Hawk. Um, that would be fun. Um, great job with your tasting. Um, does anybody else out there have questions about blind tasting? Oh, you know, I also want to mention that the reason why I chose uh, Chardonnay is also because I've got Chardonnay on the brain this week. I, we have a video coming out, I believe tomorrow, the uh, Wines on Wine series. I'm talking about all things Chardonnay, Chardonnay from Burgundy, Chardonnay from America, um, Chardonnay from Champagne, and uh, Blanc de Blanc and all of that. So, um, so be, sure, be sure to tune into that and you'll see a lot of the flavors I was talking about in this class, in that, in that class as well. Um, and also, I know a lot of people were asking in advance to have an opportunity to taste uh, to, to taste along with us. And of course, I couldn't reveal my wine to you or Jordan might have found out and vice versa. So we will be doing a tasting. In fact, I was talking about doing a, a little master's flight tasting live that uh, that all of you out there can taste along with me and and um, you know see, see we can make it a, a community tasting of sorts. So um that would be really a lot of fun it'd be really great to get your feedback as you guys are tasting too i see a question about how many wines we blind taste in a sitting now one thing that you didn't see us do here today which is always happening when you're blind tasting is spitting um typically if you're in, a, in an exam you'll blind taste six wines i've blind tasted up to 50 in a day um it's a lot of wine to blind taste but uh but, you know, practice makes perfect. And it's pretty fun practice. Yeah. You know what? And I do have a question that I get quite a bit. Can you give people an update? There has been a lot of questions about Camille Proud. What's yeah. So, yeah, the deal with Camille Proud is uh, it's just a bummer because it's still on my calendar that our big release party is this coming Tuesday. Um, mm -hmm. So, it, I, oh, and you know what else I was just thinking about is, I think today you were supposed to be in Coachella pouring wine and uh, representing Cooper's Hawk. And today I was supposed to be in Peru. I would have been hiking up to Machu Picchu. <laughs> so look at us now. This is not, not what either of us expected. But uh, back to Camille Proud, uh, I think that at this point we're going to be releasing it later, probably in July. We want to wait until everybody's uh, all back together because we want to drink it together. So the, the Camille Brave is uh, nearing the end and uh, Camille Proud will come back online. Uh, we'll, come, we'll come on when, when all of you are back dining with us. So wow, so it's I'm just getting a little to... extra to age and a little extra complexity. Exactly, exactly. Oh, it's gonna be you delicious. Pandemic is gonna just give us a great reward at the end of this. <laughs> Exactly. It's, we're buying that baby a little bit more time to, to get even better. So it's a, it's a, it's going to be a fun wine. I can't wait for everybody to taste it. This is a wine that's inspired by the right bank of Bordeaux. It's a blend of Merlot with Cabernet Franc and Malbec. Um, and it's drinking amazing. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, thank you all for joining us. We'll do this again. And it looks like uh, everybody is really excited to have us continue blind tasting Cooper's Hawk wines. So let's, um, uh, let's, let's, keep, uh, let's keep this in mind for next time. I think that, that wines of the month, as long as they're still around, that those count too. So oh. bring it, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun. Well, have well, an again. incredible time out there. Definitely looking forward to being able to see everyone back in the restaurant soon these uh these barrels are very lonely without all of our amazing guests <laughs> i know i know all right well thank you everyone thanks for joining us that was a lot of fun we will totally do this again Bye. Cheers. good job jordan Cheers. <laughs>